We're coming to you live from Manila and Thailand. Hello, Esther. Hi, Alma. I'm Esther Adanga from Thailand Bureau, bringing you the news in the dynamic ASEAN region. On today's headlines. A man who violently attacked seven Asian women in New York in February has been charged with hate crimes. The new Omicron variant XE has been detected in Bangkok. Our ASEAN Bureau Chief Crystal Mapa will join us live for the details. 54% and the alarming new report, what top scientists say must so be done right now to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Celsius. And during the annual consular outreach by the Philippine Consulate General held in Las Vegas, Nevada, presidents share with us their hopes for the upcoming Philippine presidential election. Our correspondent from the U.S., Anna Hui, reports from Las Vegas. First in our news, a man who violently attacked seven Asian women in New York in February has been charged with hate crimes. Police say he attacked seven Asian women in a span of two hours. On February 27, between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., 28-year-old Steven Sajunk assaulted and beat the women in the eastern and central parts of the island of Manhattan. Manhattan's District Attorney Alvin Bragg said Sajong selectively ambushed seven Asian women in separate assaults, some of which he struck from behind for no their perceived race. Bragg, the first African-American to hold the post of Manhattan District Attorney, said these attacks on seven New York women, each fueled by anti-Asian hate, are yet another sobering reminder of the demonstrable fears that Asian American community faces. In February, he said the number of investigations into crimes against people of Asian origin, 33 at the time, had never been at high since 2010, when a special unit was set up in Manhattan. Racially motivated attacks on Asian people have increased in the United States in 2020 and the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Some groups have blamed the rhetoric of former President Donald Trump, who spoke publicly of the Chinese virus. Against a backdrop of rising crime in New York since 2020, authorities are also pointing to the psychiatric disorder in many attackers, as in January when an Asian woman died after being pushed by a man with mental health issues onto the trucks of the subway as a train was entering the station. Asian Americans, including Filipinos in New York, are calling on leaders and communities to join them in rallying against hate crimes plaguing the country. In New York City, Joan Soriano reports. Prejudice against Asians began early in the pandemic, particularly here in Chinatown, when stores were forced to shutter or decrease their hours so that employees can get home safely at night. As the pandemic continued, attacks against Asians dramatically increased in number. According to the New York Police Department, hate crimes against Asians skyrocketed 361% in 2021. The numbers are likely much higher as not all incidents are reported or classified as hate crimes. Since the beginning of this year, some of the attacks included Michelle Goh, who was pushed in front of an oncoming train at Times Square by a homeless man. A 67-year-old Filipina who was punched 125 times and kicked by another resident as she entered her apartment complex in Yonkers. A 73-year-old Filipino who was assaulted by a homeless man near Times Square. And recently, a 53-year-old Filipino who was beaten and robbed at a McDonald's in Midtown Manhattan. There have been 36 reported incidents against Filipinos since last year, according to the Philippine Consulate. In response to these unprovoked attacks, groups have been offering free self-defense workshops, even offering pepper spray as an added source of protection. This past Wednesday, Filipinos and Filipino Americans held a rally for justice, calling on elected officials to take action and support the community with resources, funding and greater accessibility to aid. 
Philippine Consul General Elmer Cato has condemned the senseless attacks and advised Kababayan to be extra vigilant and take necessary precautions, especially in public. Yesterday, our Kababayan uh, uh, staged a rally at the, in uh, New York City to for express our indignation, our collective indignation over the surge in uh, incidents, mostly anti-Asian hate involving our Kababayan. From uh, last year to the present, we had uh, 34 recorded cases. Okay, 34 recorded cases involving Filipinos uh, here in New York and nearby areas. The incidents, well, they include Asian hate crimes and Asian hate incidents also include uh, criminal incidents. So, hindi lahat ng 34 cases natin are anti-Asian hate related. But just the same, of course, we are really concerned, you know? Kasi nga, bakit ang dami nang nangyayaring ganitong uh, mga insidente? They recently held their third virtual self-defense and situational awareness class since last year. New York Governor Hochul hosted a roundtable with Asian American leaders in March to discuss the alarming rise in hate crimes. Her administration is committed to sending a strong message that hate has no home in New York and announced a $10 million investment in Asian American communities, the largest in the state's history. Joanne Soriano, New York, New York, Eagle News. In other news, the new Omicron variant XE has been detected in the capital city, Bangkok. Our Bureau Chief, Crystal Bapa, will tell us more. Thailand reported its first case of Omicron XE, a new hybrid of two previous versions of the Omicron variant in which the World Health Organization has warned about. The XE is a mutant hybrid of the BA1 and BA2 variants, which was found through genomic sequencing of a swab sample taken from a Thai patient, as reported by the Center for Medical Genomics at Ramati Bodhi Hospital. According to the center, the XE recombinant is not the Delta Cron variant. The World Health Organization warned that Omicron XE could be the most transmissible strain yet its severity is still being investigated. Reports from the UK Health Services Agency said the Omicron XE is 10% more transmissible than BA2 and 43% more transmissible than the original Omicron. The center also added that Omicron XE remains to be seen if it will become the dominant strain. 99.84% of all new COVID-19 cases in Thailand are of Omicron variant, and of this, 92.2% are of the BA2 sub-variant. Meanwhile, Thailand logged 21,088 new infections today and 91 fatalities. Back to you, Esther. Thank you, Christelle, for that update. You stay safe there in Bangkok. You too, Esther. Reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand, I am Crystal Mapa. We live in interesting times. In a related news, now, as mentioned, Thailand reported its first case of Omicron XE. This is a combination of the two previous versions of the Omicron variant shortly after the WHO warned about this new hybrid. Now, here in the country, the Department of Health says it is working with the Philippine Genome Center to monitor the case trends and conducting genomic surveillance activities amid the threats of new and existing variants. An expert explains. Take a look. This is a recombinant of the BA1 and BA2. Uh -huh. So, pinaghalo ang mutation ng BA1 and BA2. Mm. So, that means it is expected that you will have a more transmissible uh, variant uh, uh, or a COVID virus. And I think WHO has already mentioned that it is 10% more uh, oh. transmissible oh. than the BA2. And you know, BA2 is the one that is the dominant variant now in most uh, countries. And if you are looking at an XE Omicron more transmissible than this, then that will be really be dangerous in terms of it might overlap and it might uh, be the dominant variant of concern 
although it's not been declared by the WHO as a variant of concern at this point in time. Those who are boosted, okay. especially uh, within three months, are still being able to protect ourselves. No, Our immunity against this Omicron variant is still there. No? What the, what's the concern now are those who received the primary vaccine series mm. and has not received the, the booster yeah. dose because when Omicron came, most of the efficacy, effectiveness of the vaccine oh. dropped significantly. And when you are given the booster, it will be maintained higher, like 60 to 70 percent. So in short, it, we need to vaccinate and give the booster dose to the population now. Second booster is oh. only recommended for those 60 years old and above, oh, those who are immunocompromised. Why? Because these are the population with the first booster, it's not enough to build that immunity because of their conditions. But for you, no, uh, without comorbidities, those less than 60 years old, then uh, that will not be the priority. So, so you're still good with the first booster uh, dose. Mask natin, no? We know that the face mask is the direct uh, barrier against any aerosol or any airborne uh, particles of the virus, no? Now, ang nangyayari ngayon, medyo kumakampante ang mga tao, nagtatanggal, no? So, we need to, to emphasize again, no? Uh, the only way to, pro to be protected directly against aerosolization, droplet, is wearing the face mask properly and consistently. Now let's get the latest coronavirus update in Malaysia. Our correspondent from Malaysia, Alfred Balmes, reports from Kuala Lumpur. Hi, Esther. Good afternoon. According to the Health Ministry, Malaysia recorded 10,002 new COVID-19 cases on Monday, April 4. Based on the Ministry COVID Now portal, 9,904 of new COVID-19 infections in the country were local transmission, while there were 98 imported cases. This bringing the total number of COVID-19 infections in the country to 4,256,469 cases since the pandemic began. The utilization of the hospital beds stand at 59.1%, while ICU and ventilator usage were currently at 53.8% and 33.1% respectively. A total of 28 deaths were recorded on Monday, with seven classified as being brought and dead bringing the total number to 35,127. That would be the latest update for COVID-19 situation here in Malaysia, Esther. Thanks, Alfred, for your time. You stay safe and stay healthy. Likewise, live reporting from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This is Alfred Balbes, and we live in interesting times. Thank you, Alfred, for the update on the numbers there in Kuala Lumpur. And now we go to the war in Ukraine. And fair warning to our viewers as we show you some images of dead civilians in the Ukrainian town of Bucha. More than 300 people were tortured in Bucha, according to authorities. The bodies of five men tortured and killed by Russian troops were found in a basement of a children's health facility that, according to the Ukrainian Prosecutor General's office on Monday. Now, AFP photographers entered Bucha, northwest of Kiev on Saturday, and directly confirmed the presence of some 20 other bodies, all in civilian clothing and some with their hands bound in scenes that have sparked global revulsion and accusations of war crimes. Dozens of corpses in civilian clothes were also discovered at the weekend in Bucha on the northwestern gates of the Ukrainian capital in the streets or in mass graves. Russia's defense ministry, meanwhile, has denied responsibility, saying that all its units withdrew completely from Bucha as early as March 30. And the Kremlin also dismissed these graphic images emerging from the town as fakes concocted by Ukraine. In a related news, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky warns 
that Russia will try to hide the traces of their crimes after the discovery of bodies scattered on the streets of the Ukrainian town of Bucha sparked global outrage. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden calls for a war crimes trial. Take a look. Ми вже робимо все, щоб якнайшвидше встановити усіх причетних російських військових до цих злочинів. Усе, щоб їх покарати, це буде спільна робота нашої держави з Європейським Союзом та міжнародними інституціями, зокрема з Міжнародним кримінальним судом. Ймовірно, тепер окупанти будуть намагатись сховати сліди своїх злочинів. Вони не зробили цього в Бучі, коли відступали. Але на іншій території це, ймовірно, можливо. So this could be an actual have a war crime trial. This guy is brutal. And what's happening in Buka is outrageous. And everyone's seen it. Biden has called Putin a war criminal in the past, provoking an angry response from the Kremlin. The U.S. and NATO, wary of direct conflict with nuclear-armed Russia, have instead poured money and arms into Ukraine while leveling unprecedented sanctions against Moscow and Putin's cronies in a bid to cripple the economy. On Monday, Biden said he was seeking yet more sanctions. Meanwhile, police investigating a mass shooting in California city center that left six people dead and 12 wounded said they have now arrested a man in connection with America's latest bout of fatal gun violence. Now, this video circulating on social media appeared to show some kind of brawl followed by the sounds of gunfire. And then, as you can see here, people running all around. More than 100 shell casings were recovered after the gun battle apparently erupted following a fight in downtown Sacramento as nightclubs were emptying around 2 a.m. Sunday. Police have given no information as to whether anyone was targeted in the worst such incident in city's history or if the shooters were firing indiscriminately. Detectives worked through the night, combing a spread out crime scene, and on Monday they announced the arrest of a 26 year old named Dandre Martin. SWAT teams swooped on three other addresses with at least one handgun recovered. Firearms are involved in approximately 40,000 deaths a year in the United States, according to the Gun Violence Archive website. Lax gun laws and a constitutionally guaranteed right to bear arms has been given reason for owning a gun. And the news continues here on House and in Focus. Esther and I will be back right after this. Mr. Bawal, ang galing mo namang sumayaw. Pwede pa kopya ng dance steps mo? Oo naman, Mr. Pwede. Mr. Bawal, ang ganda rin ang forma mo. Pwede pa kopya ng forma mo? Oo ba? Mr. Bawal, pakopya naman sagot mo. Yan ang hindi pwede. Ang pagsilip sa sagot ng iba, lalong-lalong na sa butuhan. Oy! Bawal yan! Ayon sa Omnibus Election Code, ang pagtatangkang silipin at alamin ang boto ng iba ay isang election offense. Mr. Pwede! <laughs> 
please report to the principal's office. Ako si Mr. Bawal, nagpapaalala sa inyo na ang pagsilip sa boto ng ibang butante. Uy! Bawal yan! A public service message of Net25, formata ng halalan 2022. Matatag, matapang, matapat. Alam namin ang iyong pagsisikap. Dama namin ang iyong mga sakripisyo. Kita namin ang paghirap mo sa bawat pagsubok. Kaya sa kabila ng mga hamon ng buhay, nandito kami para umalalay. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka na mangamba, sasamahan ka namin ito pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo. Sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon, Ilalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa new era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti. At tagumpay. Welcome back. An alarming new report and what top scientists say must be done right now to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. The UN Climate Report out now with a blunt warning. It's now or never for the world to make deep cuts in greenhouse gas emissions as we face the prospect of an unlivable Earth. Let's take a look. 54% higher than in 1990. So we are definitely not on track to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Question, because the report is very clear that we need to take action now or 1.5 degrees may become simply beyond reach. It may be physically impossible uh, to, to, to get there. So uh, the, 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 the message is we don't have a date. We're not this year, not next year, this week, not next week, today, not tomorrow. And that would really be the message. We need to get on with this now or 1.5 degrees will slip beyond reach. Uh, climate change is the result of more than a century of unsustainable energy and land use and patterns of sustainable consumption and production. And what this report has done is to show how taking action now can move us towards a fairer and more livable world. And so just to sum it all up, we know what to do, we know how to do it, and now it's up to us to take action. And just to say, the longer we put off action in terms of, uh, in terms of addressing climate change, the bigger the feasibility challenges will be. And that is a very, very clear message of the report. In line with previous reports from the Intergovernmental Panel, which was established in 1988, this latest edition sounded a strong warning that much bolder action is needed immediately to cut greenhouse gas emissions using sustainable methods. A lot of importance is attached to the IPCC assessments because they provide governments with scientific information that they can use to develop climate policies. They're also a feature of international negotiations to tackle climate change. The United Nations Secretary General called the latest report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change a litany of broken climate promises and said it showed that we have to move fast. Take a look. 
the jury has reached a verdict, and it is damning. This report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is a litany of broken climate promises. It is a file of shame, cataloging the empty pledges that put us firmly on track towards an unlivable world. We are on a fast track to climate disaster. Thank you. We do show that uh, fossil fuel infrastructure that we keep building, will some of that will be stranded, which means that we will not be able to use it if we want to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees. The UN roadmap to avoid disaster says we must stop increasing gas emissions by 2025, then simply cut them by 43 percent by 2030. Cutting back on long-haul flights, switching to plant-based diets, climate-proofing buildings, and other ways of cutting consumption that drives energy demand could reduce greenhouse gas emissions to 40 to 70 percent by 2050. With war in Ukraine spurring urgent efforts to transition away from Russian oil and gas in the West, observers said the report should sharpen nation's focus on climate commitments. A full 99% of people on Earth breathe air containing too many pollutants. That was the report of the World Health Organization, and they blame poor air quality for millions of deaths each year. Take a look. I'm a communications officer. But uh, a big, big proportion, almost 100% of the global population is still breathing air that is not, that exceed the, 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 the standards recommended by the World Health Organization. We know that every year more than 7 million people die because of exposure to this uh, polluted air. Air quality is the poorest in, uh, in specific regions like the Eastern Mediterranean region, the Southeast Asian region and also Africa. And for the first time, the report also provided ground measurements of annual mean concentrations of nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, a common urban pollutant which is associated with respiratory diseases, particularly asthma. The report found problems related to particulate pollution were far worse in poorer countries, but that most cities had trouble with nitrogen dioxide. A number of governments are taking steps to improve air quality. But WHO is calling for a rapid intensification of actions to adopt or revise and implement national air quality standards according to the latest WHO air quality guidelines. In other news, Sri Lankan demonstrators gathered at Independence Memorial Hall and outside President Gotabaya's Rajapaksha's office in Colombo on Monday, demanding his resignation. Severe shortages of food, fuel, and other essentials, along with record inflation and crippling power cuts, have inflicted widespread misery across the island nation, which is enduring its most painful downturn since independence from Britain in 1948. President Godavaya Rajapaksha's once powerful SLPP ruling coalition suffered a string of defections ahead of the parliamentary session, undermining his ability to ratify a state of emergency imposed on Friday to quell the growing public protest. Boisterous demonstrations have spread across the country of 22 million despite emergency laws allowing troops to detain participants and a weekend curfew that lapsed on Monday morning. Crowds have attempted to storm the homes of over a dozen government figures, including the president's house in Colombo. The state of emergency is due to expire on Thursday next week unless it is ratified in a parliamentary vote. In other news, oil price upticks in the international market due largely to Russia's invasion of Ukraine resulted in the country's inflation rate last March to 4% from a month ago's 3%. Now, this brought the average inflation in the first quarter this year 
to 3.4 percent within the government's 2 to 4 percent target range until 2024. In a viral message to journalists on Tuesday, BSP or Banco Central and Filipinas Governor Benjamin Diokno said inflation expectations have likewise risen, but they continue to be anchored to the 2.4 percent target band. Increases in oil prices and their impact on commodity prices in both the international and domestic markets made Philippine monetary authorities hike the government's average inflation forecast for this year to 4.3 and 3.6 percent for next year. Now these were previously at 3.7 percent for this year and 3.3 percent for 2023. Diokno said, quote, the economic consequences of Russia's invasion of Ukraine have become a significant headwind in the global economic recovery. And we have more updates when we return. Sigurado ako, maraming tao yes. sa araw ng botohan. Nako, sinabi mo pa, pila dito, pila doon. Ay, napakaraming tao. Ah, alam niyo ba, sa araw ng botohan, bukas na ang presinto ng alas 6 ng umaga. Ah. Bukas na ang presinto ng alas 6 ng umaga? Wow, parang choir. Mula alas 6 ng umaga hanggang alas 5 ng hapon. Ito nga, ang hirap pa niyan. Yung hanapan ng presinto. Kaya nga, sa araw ng botohan, mas makabubuting dumating ng maaga sa presinto para iwas sa siksikan at sa dami ng tao na ko! Iwas din sa init. Tama! Agahan natin ang pagboto. Korek ka dyan, Mare. Teka lang. Nagtitinda ka ng balot. Ay, ang aga pa. Eh, dahil the early bird catches... Wala pa lang bird. Balot! Balot! The early palot catches... Hindi naman kayo, Worm. Bili na lang po kayo. Para sa karagdagang kaalaman, makipag-ugnayan lang sa pinakamalapit na barangay o bisitahin ang Comelec website. A public service message of Net25. For mata ng Halalan 2022. Matatag, matapang, matapat. Welcome back. Welcome back to the program. An ongoing water contamination crisis, the effects of Russia-Ukraine conflict, and still the uncertainties of the COVID-19 pandemic continue to dominate the news in Hawaii. Here's Eagle News correspondent Mio Asenas with a recap so far this year. The Navy has shown repeatedly that they are ill-equipped and incapable of making Red Hill safe. Make no mistake. The whole of government of Hawaii believes Red Hill should be closed. The Aloha State began the new year still dealing with the widespread contamination of the drinking water system in and around Pearl Harbor. Since November, nearly 100,000 residents had to be relocated and spend their holidays in hotels. In early March, the federal government finally decided to begin shutting down the aging bulk fuel storage at Red Hill. While the Honolulu Board of Water Supply encouraged island residents to begin saving water ahead of a drier summer season. In opposition of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, peaceful gatherings in Honolulu and even in the neighbor islands continue to take place. Local and state governments have also displayed their solidarity by lighting up famous landmarks in blue and yellow. The biggest of them is the state capital, which has showcased Ukraine's colors through April 8. Ever since Hawaii lifted many of the COVID-19 restrictions, visitor arrivals and spending have been trending back to pre-pandemic levels. Visitors last February, for example, spent more than a billion dollars compared to less than 400 million in the same period a year ago. Despite the good news, Hawaii's governor remains cautiously optimistic. We've seen previous progress 
wiped out by a Delta or Omicron variant. I will be ready to reinstitute the mass policy if COVID cases should surge. We are continuing to monitor the global, national, and local situation and will take the actions necessary. Finally, members of the Iglesia de Cristo or Church of Christ on Oahu resumed their in person activities, including a beach cleanup in West Oahu and the North Shore. Officials from Honolulu's Parks and Recreation Department were present to observe the event at Miley Beach Park. They also thanked the church members for taking advantage of the opportunity to hold such a project, just days after the city government lifted restrictions on large scale gatherings. From Honolulu, Hawaii, I'm Yosena's Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Mio. And for those uh, tidbits of news from our Hawaii Bureau, happy anniversary to you guys. Meanwhile, during the annular consular outreach by the Philippine Consulate General held in Las Vegas, Nevada, residents share with us their hopes for the upcoming Philippine presidential election. Our correspondent from the U.S. reports from Las Vegas. Anna Kui. The Philippine Consulate General in Los Angeles held its first 2022 outreach event in Las Vegas, Nevada. In an effort to bring its services closer to the Filipino community, the Philippine Consular Outreach was held in partnership with the PhilAM Civic Action International. Well, normally uh, they service, uh, in every outreach that we have, they service around 500 uh, plus uh, people. I availed uh, the dual citizenship service. So I didn't have to travel to Los Angeles. They were able to service it all um, here in Las Vegas. In addition to passport renewal, dual citizenship and civil registry, some Filipino citizens registered to vote for the upcoming Philippine election during the previous consular outreach events. Uh, during the consular outreach last year, during the uh, registration, voters registration, they are obliged actually to, uh, uh, to register as Filipino voters. And there's a lot of uh, dual citizens, Filipino citizens still in Las Vegas. The overseas voting period for the Philippine election opens on April 10 and ends on May 9. Philippine consulates in the U.S. will facilitate the mailings of the election packets containing the official ballots. We spoke with local Filipinos who shared their thoughts about the upcoming Philippine election. I want to make a good election Pagka tayong Pilipino yung nagkakaisa at makapakili tayo ng magandang leader, ay eh, nandoon ang pag-asa. Right, I think it's a very important so that we can somehow contribute to the progress of the Philippines, to the betterment of the lives of the people living there. And there are those who are not able to cast their vote but still express their concerns for the Philippines and why they think it's important to vote. Hindi na makabuto kung... Anuhin ko lang yung mga kapatid ko at saka yung mga relatives ko doon na bubuto sila kung sino man ang napupusuan nila at saka yung mag sa bansa natin. Ah, oo, importante. Pero importante yun dahil hiran doon ang kinabukasan ng ating bansa. Eh. Anna Quito, Las Vegas, Nevada. The Philippines and Japan will hold an inaugural Foreign and Defense Ministerial Meeting, or the 2 plus 2 Dialogue, on April 9 in Tokyo to ramp up cooperation amid the growing complexity of regional and international security environment, the, Defar the Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, confirmed Tuesday. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Luxin Jr. and National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana will, held, will head the Philippine delegation. The DFA said the meeting set by President Rodrigo Duterte and Japanese Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida during their tele-summit in, in November 2021 serves as the next logical progression in the deepening policy and security cooperation between Tokyo and Manila and is envisioned to be a key component in strengthening the two nations' decade-old strategic partnership. Japan is one of the only two countries next to the United States with the Philippines has a 2 plus 2 dialogue mechanism.
In its statement, the DFA said the two countries had forged close ties in various areas of cooperation over the past six decades, which have resulted in the improvement of the Philippines' maritime law enforcement capabilities, increased maritime domain awareness, and enhanced counterterrorism and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief capabilities, among others. The DFA has yet to provide details on specific topics that would be covered, but said the meeting would lay the ground work for the Philippine-Japan Security Partnership in the next decade. And we'll go for a short break. Esther and I will be back right after this. Sayang talaga kayo. Jolena, siguro dapat yung ma-realize na hindi na talaga mabubuo ang Team Windows ever. Iboto po natin si Amor bilang Vice Mayor. Erwin, thank you, ah. Kasi nire-recognize mo na ako as your partner. Sana tuloy-tuloy na. Pati rin sa kasalan. Ha? Huh? Gusto ko si kitang inyatid pa uwi. Kung! Bye ka. Um... Panalo o talo? It's you! Weeknights pagkatapos ng Mi Esperanza. Dito lang sa Net25, prime time ng pamilya! Umpisa ito ng second season. Nagpamalik ang nag-iisang Diamond Star! Umpis e! Soriano! Diba? Ke bonga bonga! Ano mo po ko ng TV? Ay, ano po ba? Eh, sino po ba idol mo siya po? Ah, Zim is my son Soriano. Nakakaloka! Dito lang sa... Kingdom City! Ta-da-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-
in Phuket is a proof that no matter where they are, they're always united with the church administration in doing good to those who are in need. Reporting from Phuket, Thailand, this is Ian Silada, and we'll live in interesting times. Thank you very much, Ian. And uh, Esther, did you have any blood donation drive there lately? You yes, did, right? yes, um, we have we also have uh, blood donation in the eastern part of Thailand, so watch out for it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Esther, for keeping me company as always. You know, it's always my pleasure, Alma, and that is the latest news in the ASEAN region. Thank you for joining us today here in ASEAN in Focus. This is Esther Adanga from Thailand Bureau, and we live in interesting times. Thank you, Esther. I'm Alma Angeles, and we live in interesting times.